Hello, I'm MJ Albacetti, and today we have the wonderful opportunity of talking to Margaret B. Shipley, who for a number of years had a strong association with uh, the Well Baby Clinic uh, here in Canton. And uh, today we're going to talk to her about that experience, Margaret. Yes. But before we uh, begin, I thought maybe it would be very interesting to find out a little bit about your background. Uh, you, are you a resident of Canton, where you went to school, things like that? No, I was born in New England and um, met my husband in medical school in Rochester. Oh, I see. We were adjacent in the alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, we were married when we graduated from medical school. And then the war intervened, and um, but eventually Canton was his hometown, so oh, I see. he came back here. Mm -hmm. He was in practice for 30 years or more. What field was he? Internal medicine. Internal medicine, yes. okay. And your medical background? I spent 30 years in the kitchen. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that's a good start, good place to be. We had uh, three sons, and uh, it wasn't until the last son went off to school that I, I was thinking the other day, I, the day he left for college, I started the residency at Cleveland Metro, Metropolitan Hospital in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was like a, it was like new medicine, because I'd been away for so long. It was oh, I see. like starting over from the beginning again. Mm -hmm. Well, how did you get affiliated with the this Well Baby Clinic? The Junior League called, and one of their. Um, emphases that year was on maternal and child health and uh, they wanted to start something. Uh, there had been a, a pediatric clinic previously that Dr. Graham ministered to and uh, but it had not been active for a long time. But the Junior League wanted to start something and at that time they f f fielded the funding for one year the first year and the second year they shared the funding and the third year they were out of the funding so uh, oh. it was a three-year uh, attempt to establish something. And you came in as a volunteer at that time and uh, I was always a volunteer. And, and had to manage the facility. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well what were some of the uh, problems like in those very early days? We had one paid employee that was Mrs. Wechter from Visiting Nurse, and she was the one that did the shopping for the diapers and uh, set up the inoculations. And uh, But she was our only paid employee for quite a while. Mm -hmm. We had marvelous volunteers, as you can tell. It, w it was an interesting project, I think, and attracted volunteers for that. And we also attracted uh, donations of equipment, lab laboratory equipment. Uh, we didn't attract much money for salaries, but uh, it was an attractive project for people to give equipment to. Mm -hmm. And Ella was in charge of that. And uh, Betty Lou and, and Carol were some of the early volunteer nurses. And, the, and these people are here with us today yes, and we'll be yeah, talking to yes. them a little bit later on. Yes. Um, it was called the Well Baby Clinic and I uh, was amused to learn that you dealt primarily with children, little kids, who were in good health and your objective was to keep them in good health. And to identify problems early. I see. Were there any big surprises in those days? Any uh, real crisis situations? One of the things that uh, became prominent while we were there was the business about lead intoxication. Oh, yeah. And uh, I remember we all went to Cleveland. Remember that, girls? We went to hear that somebody talk about that, and then we started testing for lead, and uh, children eating bone or paint chips from mm -hmm. older houses that were painted. Was that a, that serious a problem? Oh, yes. Isn't that amazing? Hmm. Yes. And a preventable problem. Mm -hmm. 
because of the uh, the amount of uh, the poverty. Well, of course, most of your uh, patients, most of the children who came in, were from very poor families. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, how was it funded? How uh, the Junior League, of course, funded it for a time. Yes, and then the United Way took over. Mm -hmm. And you solicited donations. We did. We had uh, oh, for several years they. Uh, sold ornaments for the Christmas tree downtown mm -hmm. during the holiday. That was a, a minor source of income, I think. Now, the, uh, the people themselves never had to uh, pay. You, you had a system arranged about how they could pay? We didn't ask for anything. We, mm -hmm. I think eventually we had a dish sitting out front, didn't we, for, for contributions? <laughs> <Just> and, <laughs> yeah. Well, eventually, when, if they did get Medicaid, yeah, we we yeah, build we Medicaid. Yes. Oh, when Medicaid yeah. came in, you yeah. you could uh, you could turn to them. Yes. Okay. But we didn't charge. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Um, and you were affiliated with uh, the Well Baby Clinic for a number of years then. Well, from the beginning. Uh huh. And when did you retire? Yeah. And when did you uh, retire? I don't remember. Well, when I was sixty-five, I think. Mm -hmm. Which would be 17 years ago. Mm -hmm. But you continued uh, your affiliation with them. Oh no, not really. I don't think. Yeah, you did. Oh, I did. I just, uh, you, you always said you were. You were in touch. You were always in touch with everything <laughs> yeah. going on down there. <laughs> when I left, they hired a, a, a medical director, mm -hmm. and they've been fortunate to have board-qualified pediatricians. In charge. Mm -hmm. Are you surprised um, that it has become such a significant um, oh, yes. place yes. And, and such a great resource to people in the community? Yes. I visited the facility um, <laughs> just to do a little homework before our interview, and uh, I, I must have passed it any number of times and, and thought how wonderful to have this located in that area yes. where, where it is so accessible. Right. And I actually went inside and looked around a little bit. And well, good so you. Yeah. you must be very, very proud of that, uh, that accomplishment. I, I am. We, uh, we didn't start there. We started, well, do you remember the name of the school? Wells. Wells. Burns. Burns. Burns, Burns, I think it was. I wasn't at the school. I wasn't at the school either. And I think we moved five five times that first year. We, <laughs> no kidding. Why so many moves? Uh, oh, we were a noisy bunch. You know, we made the babies cry, and it was, uh, and we upset anywhere we they sent us. For a while, we were. Anything that was free. <laughs> yeah, we uh, remember the old Goodwill that was on East Tusk. Yes. We were there for a while. Change the babies on a pool table. That's I right. heard somebody say. They had a, a, oh my. a student dormitory like next door. And we were in the basement of that with, where the pool table was. <laughs> we put down newspapers and clean towels, and uh, that was, we learned that was a good place to dress and undress babies. Everybody could have their own space on the pool table. <laughs> <laughs> Fascinating. Well, there must be a lot of stories that you could tell about your days there. Uh, yes. Any uh, particularly interesting stories that uh, you recall? Oh, dear. Help me. Help me, girl. Problematic or, uh, or pleasing, uh, good things happening, bad things happening? I remember that house when I started volunteering. The green house. Yeah. And it, we had to go up and down the stairs, and it was always like a problem. We used to worry about the, the mothers and the babies. All right. And part of it was upstairs, and the waiting room was like down. This was a house that uh, the United Way had uh, uh, refurbished. Okay. They this put the in new uh, heating and new electric, and uh, were anxious to rent it out then. That was a summer project mm -hmm. for United Way, I think. And they gave us, it was two floors. The waiting room was on the first floor in the registration part. And I think the, inoculate, the vaccination part was there. But they would come upstairs mm -hmm. to see me. And mm -hmm. uh, that's where I learned that perspiration from your forehead dripping down into your eyes 
was very irritating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I never knew that. I never knew that before. Wow. <laughs> but uh, those were our best accommodations. At least we could separate the the, the crying and the when. And the dental uh, clinic was started in that house. And that's uh, the dental clinic was started in that house too. Remember, they had dental clinic once a week. Did they? And I don't remember that. Uh, Dennis, Dental Society volunteers. Well, did you um, have any real uh, crisis situations there at any time? Parents bringing in a child that was really... Oh, yes. In a bad way? And we made several emergency trips. I remember Shirley driving a sick baby to the emergency room and... Uh, but we always had cooperation from the other pediatricians in town yes. that they would take over and care mm -hmm. for these children when they were ill. Mm -hmm. Okay. Until we established our own. But you actually started at some point to also care for uh, sick babies that would be brought in. I didn't. In. But that, that was later. That came afterwards. That came uh, uh, later on. Well, I wonder if uh, uh, any of you ladies have thought of some questions that you might like to sit here for a minute or two. Hi, I'm Betty Lou Lehman. I'm was an RN at the clinic. I volunteered a number of years and with Margaret and one of the primary things that Margaret didn't mention was all the teaching we did with the children. And the diet parents. and the, the parents. Yeah, with diet, helping them to know if they needed help with the infants with the with their formula and all, that there was an agency in town called WIC that they could get their their formula, uh, taught them about immunizations, when when they had to have them and why they had to have them, because that was primary when we started out. That was it, was the make sure they got their immunizations properly and then teaching to keep the kids healthy. And sometimes and that they needed to keep track of the record of the immunizations. So. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes we'd have a little one come in that wasn't thriving properly and with some teaching and urging from us lots of times it was amazing how they would, there'd be a turnaround, mm -hmm. you could just see them start doing, growing like they should. That, that was a big thing. Were you um, shocked or uh, uh, amazed at, at the condition in which some of these people lived and, and the lives of the children? Well, I think that's always a, a shocker. Mm -hmm. A lot of these yeah. people lived in poverty. Yes. Yeah. And they, weren't, they didn't know how to get out, and, that, and they didn't know that they were aware that there was help in the community for their health coverage. What about so. nutrition? of the kids. Right. We did a lot of teaching on nutrition, like I say, with the Both over and underweight. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So we uh, eventually had a social worker and that was a big help because then she could go into the homes and show the moms how to take care of the child in the home and and maybe get them hooked up to agencies even to teach them how to cook. They didn't know how to cook. Therefore, that was a, a, a shocker to me. Yeah. yeah. I used to try to teach them how to make normal saline for, to rinse out their noses and things like that. And nobody had measuring spoons at home. <laughs> it would be like a half a teaspoon of yeah. salt and a glass of water. And, uh, well, and the same for measuring medicines, too, yeah. when we got to that point. We had it, but we tried to give, give measuring yeah. spoons and cups when we started dispensing medication. What about literacy? Mothers that could read or couldn't read, you run into much of that? A high school graduate was rare, mm -hmm. I would say. Yeah. You didn't, they... They, I, I would say for the most part, the majority of them could read and write, but, uh... 
I think yeah. often they didn't want us to know. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But, you know, when you'd, you'd say something to them, have you ever read your child a book? Well, I, I can't afford a book. I said, there's libraries. <laughs> and, you know, it was just, you had to just show that to them. Margaret, were a lot of these people not aware of other social services that they could call on? I think so, yes. When we first started out, they definitely weren't aware of the help. That's where the social worker helped us. Yes. Yeah. Making referrals and... Mm -hmm. My name is Ella Lazic, and I was in charge of the lab. But I originally started out as a volunteer when we were in that house that was with all the stairs. <laughs> and uh, when they moved to the school, that was like a big improvement. We had different rooms for the different activities, and they had an actual lab. And this is when they asked me if I would be in charge of the lab two days a week. And uh, so it, it was getting more and more busy. We had more and more clients and patients. And so originally, and then they, from the two days, they went to five days a week, and they wanted me to work five days. And when you start as a volunteer, <laughs> you're not ready to go back to work full time. So I said, I really don't think so. So they came up with a plan to job share, which was really good because then even when we were on vacation, we had another person to cover for mm -hmm. us. But I have my question for you. Uh, how did they know that you would be available to start the clinic? How did you make that connection, or how did the Junior League make that connection? I think they were, they had a year when their primary emphasis was on maternal child health. Okay. And they were, I guess somebody mentioned my name. Mm -hmm. I think Nan. Debussy? No, Nan, no? Uh, Nan Shipley Warner. Okay. Oh, okay. It was in the Junior League at that time. Oh, and she knew you, that you had this medical background. Right, right, right. Okay. Because I used to wonder about that. How did? Because there you were at home, you know, all yeah, those years. Right. <coughs> and I always admired you for going Cleve, clear up to Cleveland. You know, that wasn't easy to be was, going up there. Medicine was a completely different uh, profession, mm -hmm. you know, after that. And across the street lived a man, and I can't think of his name. I was hoping somebody would call last night and would know his name, who had just moved here to take over the Altman lab from Metro General in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. And he was the one that sent me up to Metro. Oh, okay. And uh, I quickly found out that I didn't, I couldn't tell well children unless I knew sick children. Uh, yeah. So that was the beginning of uh -huh. a pediatric residency in uh, mm -hmm. So in did you stay up in Cleveland or did you commute back and forth? I would, it would vary. Mm -hmm. There were some, uh, periods when I would have to live in for six weeks. Mm -hmm. If I were working in the clinic, I could come home every night. Mm -hmm. okay. And I, when I did that, I would start back up at 10 at night so I could sleep <laughs> up there <laughs> yeah. and be there early uh -huh. in the morning to, mm -hmm. to get up. Well, um, I always admired you. I, all, all of us did down there because it was, uh, it, it was a wonderful experience for us <laughs> and to be part of it with you because uh, you, you see children, and uh, you just want them to have a better life, and I think right. this, this really helped them uh, to get them off to a better start. And one of the things that I always thought was interesting was your emphasis on leads, because nobody else was talking about it in those days. It's just uh, recently when you have that emphasis, then we used to do our leads and send them away. Right. Originally, we, somebody gave us a lead machine. We right. used to do our own leads. And the city uh, health department used to send their leads over for us yes. to do. And so I thought, boy, we were really like pioneers in that area <laughs> because of you. And that always made me feel good because the consequences of a lead poisoning right. was what, in, in the mind yes. or the brain? Uh, right. So I thought, boy, those kids didn't have a chance And it's at a all. preventable problem. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's it. Yeah. So uh, I had a real good experience when I was there. I had about 10 years. Of, <laughs> and that's hard for me to believe I was there that long. But anyhow, we started out, uh, somebody at the uh, Altman lab dug out a, a microscope. It was a monocular, just one, you know, that nobody was using anymore, but they gave it to us. So we had that, and we used to do the hemoglobins. 
and the leads, and that's about what we did. But by the time I left, people had given us, as you mentioned, they donated different machinery. We had our own lead machine. Uh, we had a hematology machine. <coughs> Somebody gave us an incubator to do cultures for strep. Right. So this was all, you know, it was, I was really happy when I left, the, you know, how we started out. Oh, and another thing, someone gave us a, a binocular mm -hmm. microscope, which you can really see a lot more detail. So I, I just was, you know, I, when I finally left, I thought, well, it's, <laughs> it's in good hands. And whenever we have any of our lunches or dinners, uh -huh. and I talk to the lab techs that are there now, uh -huh. it always makes me feel good. They always seem like really nice gals because they could probably go to the hospital and make a lot more uh -huh. money, but here they are. It's, you know, they're getting paid, uh -huh. but nothing like they would otherwise. Uh -huh. And it makes me feel good, too, to see the pediatricians that are down there. They have some really... Uh -huh good good doctors right. and so it's been a wonderful experience yeah. for me <laughs> okay hi I'm Carol Easterday and I started out as a volunteer RN with Margaret and continued until I was paid <laughs> <laughs> and then I retired and now I'm on the Shipley board and um, this is where uh, they wanted us to do this so that we would always have a history of the clinic I had a question for you, Margaret. Uh, <laughs> now, did you start in 1971? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you retired in 1980? When it was 65, I, I forget when that was. I think it was 80. 1980. Yeah, I just wanted to establish that because I thought you were a volunteer for nine years, right? I was always a volunteer. Right, yeah. right. And I volunteered for eight of them with you. <laughs> <laughs> And I also volunteered after I retired. <laughs> and still. <laughs> yeah, once in a while, yes, yes. Yes, I, I had a real eye-opener when I started working there, too. Uh, coming from a very loving, nurturing mother, I did not realize that there were a lot of mothers out there that did not understand yeah. how to mother. And I felt that was our biggest contribution to that group of mothers and their children was that we taught them so much. Yeah. Um, for an example, you have a failure to thrive infant. I don't know whether you remember this or not. But we couldn't figure out because she was giving the amount that she should of formula. Well, once we got to checking into it, she was double diluting the formula to make the formula last longer because she didn't have enough money to buy the amount of formula that she needed. So those were just little innocent things that I remember that it was so easy to help them. Right. And the, the firms were good about leaving us sample formula. And then we have sample Tylenol, I uh, think, that we would yeah. give them uh, when they receive their immunizations yeah. to make sure that uh, their fevers would be under right. control. And we even had uh, petty cash that uh, the mothers came in and, for example, on a snowy day, I've seen them come in without shoes on their feet. Um, we would go buy them clothes and shoes. Mm -hmm. Remember any of that? And they'd walk uh, blocks. They'd walk, yes. They walked or took the bus once I it became I think that available. was the reason we selected uh, the northeast section that originally that uh, would be relatively easy for anywhere to walk to. Right. And of course, when we moved into the old Roosevelt School, that was like heaven. Yes. Oh, my <laughs> yes. We yeah. had four examining rooms and a conference room and a bookkeeping room and a huge waiting room. And um, it was just a wonderful facility. And of course, that's where they still are today. And I think that it really does help meet the needs of that area. I think we moved five times that first year, didn't we? I wasn't there no. the first year. <laughs> Were you there, Betty Lou? That I, I didn't get there till the Goodwill building. Uh -huh. And I didn't get there till the greenhouse, where we had, <laughs> yeah. to, had to go up the stairs, <laughs> as Ella said. Yeah. Well, what were the five facilities? The first one was? It was, one the, of them was a school. The, the school, the Burns School. The Burns School the Burns was school. first. Would, did we use, did you use any of the churches? 
and there's the Burns School, and I, that was at the Goodwill. Goodwill. And the Goodwill dormitory next door. That was where we had to go upstairs to use the phone. But that was where the pool table was that uh, <laughs> <laughs> turned out to be a good dressing facility. Uh, but the fifth facility was the, uh, the school. The, uh, what was it was the, the old school? Roosevelt the School. Roosevelt yeah. School. Mm -hmm. yeah, on the northeast side. The okay. And the greenhouse. United Way bought that building and then allowed us to rent. Mm -hmm. And then child and adolescence mm -hmm. services also went in there. And at one point, I remember Margaret was a little bit concerned because we had to go to a sliding scale for charges. And uh, we didn't really want to have to, but we had to to keep up the clinic going. And uh, it all worked out because it was a sliding scale. Remember that? Uh, we hated to do it, but it had sliding to be done. Sliding scale meaning payment. Depend on their income, yeah. yes, yes. We didn't have anybody to make that determination for a long time. Right, right. I think eventually we had a little dish sitting out on the front <laughs> desk and wave for if people wanted to contribute something. But originally we didn't ask. We even had volunteer receptionist in the beginning. Everybody yeah. was volunteer except for. Do you remember, like we all talked Wecker. about the, the mothers not, you know, being up to snuff as far as information goes. But we had people also like this one. I remember her husband lost his job. She came in, and she used to be like one of the, uh, she had to come in because she wanted the children to get the immunization. But eventually she came and worked for us. Do you remember that one? Yeah. Gail? Gail? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's her last name. I remember that. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, yeah. 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 She's a good yeah. friend of Nancy. Oh, she's your friend? Uh, okay. Yeah. She was really good. Yes. And she always said that she was so thankful to the clinic because, you know, they, they were able to take care of her children when she couldn't afford it. Uh, so, you know, we had, uh, besides just women who maybe just were, you know, as you mentioned, some of them weren't educated or didn't right. know how to take care of their children. She was very, right. very good. And she did, was a really good worker, I remember. So you had some interesting volunteers oh, yes. who came in. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Yeah, and I think she actually volunteered, didn't she? I, I think so. Because she, yeah, she was payback. so thankful she wanted to pay back to uh -huh. start out as a volunteer. And believe it or not, we had so many volunteer nurses at Betty Lou and I used to schedule them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Imagine that would be hard to do in this day and age. Yeah. Anyway, I've always admired and respected and loved Margaret for all yeah. that she's done and uh, love the clinic and the uh, philosophy that it has and uh, still I'm glad to be a part of it. Okay. Carol's on the board now. Okay. Well, we've had an opportunity to talk to Margaret Shipley and also to chat with uh, three of the volunteer people who uh, worked at the facility for a number of years. That was Carol Easterday, Betty Lou Lehman, and Ella Lasik. And uh, just to wrap up, uh, Margaret, I guess um, you must have a great deal of pride that you were involved with this clinic for I do. these years. I do. And um, I wonder if you um, can. Uh, or maybe look into the future a little bit, and uh, what, what are your hopes and dreams for the facility? I think there will always be a, a population that will need that facility. I don't know what managed health care will come or what, what it will do or how it will work, but uh, somehow we have to provide health care for, for people. Do you have any fears or concerns about the way things are going with uh, health care in the United States right now? Oh, I think it's always going to go in the right direction because there's such a, such a need. Well, you've lived through quite an adventure, a career adventure with uh, this facility. You've yes, seen yeah. some wonderful things happen right. and, and very tragic things happen. Right. So, um, and much of the credit goes to you for oh, no. keeping this alive. I think the, uh, the mission keeps it alive. Mm -hmm. it's, a, 
It's a necessity, uh, almost, to keep it alive. As long as there are people who can't pay. Well, it was a great honor to have it called the Margaret B. Shipley. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that, sir. Well, baby clinic. <laughs> they changed that when she retired. You know, uh, that's that, that happened after you retired. <laughs> what did you think of that when they uh, let you oh, know? I, I cried. I couldn't stop crying. Oh. It was terrible. <laughs> It was terrible. Uh, terrible in, in a good sense, I'm sure. <laughs> you were very, very happy that it was, uh, very honored that it was done. Uh, I remember Tom came down. Tom so came, I, right. You were real pleased, yeah. Mm -hmm. And somebody was there from the repository and uh, asked me a question. And I, <laughs> <laughs> well, you've done very well today. It was and I terrible. <laughs> And I, well, I want to thank the three ladies who came in, and I want to thank you for taking the time to chat about this. And uh, this will be a historic record of Good. your contribution. Thank so, you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.